Uh, my name is David Otto. I am a counterterrorism expert uh, from an organization uh, called TGS Intelligence Consultants, uh, dealing with counterterrorism issues from the African perspective. Uh, the reason why we're here today is because we uh, are witnessing the inauguration for the Nigerian Diaspora Security Forum. Uh, this is an organization which is coming up to look at the particular security issues that Nigeria is facing today in order for them to be able to devise, you know, design and implement strategies that will lead to a long-lasting peace in Nigeria. Um, the, the work of uh, Mr. Temitepe Oludu, uh, who is the founding member of Nigerian Diaspora Security Forum, has been well appreciated and we've actually witnessed the presence of many Africans who have come today to support the uh, work of the Nigerian Diaspora Security Forum. I think this is going to be a very good platform where Nigerians, you know, Africans of different uh, 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 environments here in the diaspora, back home in Africa, you know, will have a platform to present, you know, the, their own part of the uh, bargain in providing for solutions for the issues that we face. Security is a big issue and with Boko Haram, being one of the deadliest terrorist organizations in the world, I see that such an initiative uh, to look at security from different perspectives will really go a long way. Thank you very much. So, okay, I, you have said on your comment on the, uh, on the program, yes. you have been to Nigeria, you have been to Cameroon, yes. to have a look at yourself and yes. see what is happening. Yes. Tell me, what do you see? How do you see these issues being tackled? Say, for example, mm. radicalization and mm. terrorism. I mean, one of the things that, that we've seen as Africans is that in order for you to actually have a grip of the solutions in terms of security, you have to be able to go to the areas where this is happening. So therefore, we decided that, you know, I would go to Nigeria, Northern Nigeria, spend time in my degree, spend time in the IDP camps, spend time with the victims within the communities. I spend time with the interfaith religious leaders, you know, to understand, you know, how security is actually affecting them. So when you look at the, the, the environment itself, you know, the security environment of Northern Nigeria, what you find out is that, you know, most children do not have a better option. And Boko Haram has taken advantage of the fact that you know, a lot of children are out of school, a lot of children are poor, a lot of children you know, have no other better options. And then you know, they've taken this as an advantage you know, to radicalize young people who see Boko Haram as a better option than what the government can provide for them. So does that mean the government of Nigeria is somehow failing? In the areas of northern Nigeria where we visited, especially, you know, in, even in northern Cameroon as well, the government has done a lot of work. But what we realize is that, you know, the implementation of certain framework which will allow children to be able to go back to school is non-existent. So I think the problem with the north is more of a culture, is more of a tradition and a religious uh, 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 connotation which has to be addressed from the grassroots. Even if the government, you know, hasn't done much, you know, but what has to be done now, the government has to be able to encourage the communities. The government has to be able to show them that, you know, there are different options. But this is actually not the case at the moment. So I would say, in one way, the government has actually failed, you know, to address, you know, some of these drivers of radicalization in northern Nigeria. And it is the same thing that, we've, that I realized when I went to northern Cameroon. It's the same thing that is happening in Niger. It's the same thing that is happening in Chad. And mind you, all these areas are considered as one. They are not seen by the uh, uh, inhabitants of that zone to be different areas. Yes, of course, you know, when we're talking about the area that, you know, um, uh, Boko Haram is actually operating, I'm talking about northern Cameroon, I'm talking about uh, northern Nigeria, talking about Niger and Chad. These areas, you know, were run under the Sokoto Kali, uh, uh, Empire and, you know, the Kanembunu Empire. So it was seen as one area run under the Islamic uh, tradition. So now that the borders of 1884 by the Berlin Conference were divided these areas, it divided families apart, it divided uh, clans apart, it divided religion apart. So these individuals, especially the Kanuri tribe, which is made up of most of the Boko Haram uh, uh, commanders, you know, they do not see a difference in, you know, the religion or in the boundaries. So for them, this is just one area. So when people say Boko Haram is in Cameroon, they don't see that as Cameroon. They just see that as one region where they can operate freely.